Spot. This video is not sponsored, but FlexiSpot did reach out asking if I'd like to try out one of their standing desks. So they sent me the FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7, as well as a few other accessories. If you'd like to check out this desk, as well as those accessories, I'll leave links to all these down below in the description. So first things first, the setup of this desk was actually really simple and easy. It should take you about 30 minutes if you're not filming yourself like I did. If you've set up any IKEA furniture before, you'll be completely fine setting up this desk because there's pre-drilled holes and the instructions are really straightforward. The only hiccup that I had when setting up this desk was actually with the legs and the pre-drilled holes. There are two different sets of holes to drill the legs into. There's ones that are wider and ones that are thinner. I put the legs on the innermost holes, which felt right to me, but when I had the desk flipped right side up and the setup like this just felt a little bit too tight. And I knew I was gonna be putting the storage drawer underneath the desk, which would make it feel even smaller. So I had to flip the desk upside down, take it apart, and then put the legs on the outermost holes. And now that I have it set up like this, I'm so glad I took the time out to do it because it just feels way more proper and more comfortable, especially with that under desk storage drawer. Another note about this desk is that it's super heavy overall. So I recommend having two sets of hands when flipping it right side up. But if you have a smaller desk, you could get by by yourself. I have a 60 by 30 and I was able to do it by myself. It was a little sketchy, but I ended up getting it done and I didn't damage the desk. The FlexiSpot Pro Plus E7 feels so premium. It has a capacity of 355 pounds, dual motor setup with anti-collision function. And there's a nifty keypad with a USB port, four programmable height presets, as well as a child lock button to prevent accidental touches. The height of this desk ranges from 22.8 inches all the way up to 48.4 inches, which is an absolutely large range for a variety of different heights and preferences. I got this desk in 60 by 30 inches in white chipboard, which feels great to the touch. It's stable at any height, which is nice because as I type, the desk does not move. And I know that even if I have it all the way raised up, if I bump into it, nothing will tip over, damaging all my accessories. I do believe FlexiSpot gives you a four-legged standing desk, which gives you the maximum stability. But with this two-legged standing desk, I've had zero issues so far, and it's extremely stable. The slim under desk storage drawer is a game changer for me because I've never really been a fan of under desk storage drawers. I think they sent me over the small one, which is actually the proper size for my taste. It's small enough to stay out of the way, but it's big enough to hold all my accessories. So all my SSDs, hard drives, adapters, even a mouse or a pen. Everything just stays neat and organized and out of the way. And I don't have to worry about anything on top of my desk, adding more clutter to it. And I'm also a big fan of having the power strip on top of my desk. It stays tucked away and kind of incognito because it matches the color of my desk. But having something on top like that just makes it quick and easy to charge my phone or other camera accessories that I may need to charge throughout the day. And then when I'm not charging anything, I can unplug them all, stuff them away into the little drawer, and everything stays neat and tidy, unlike my old desk setup where I just had just this myriad of cables sticking out from the backside of my desk. The E7 is such a game changer. It creates a more comfortable and productive work and study environment for me, and it definitely leads to a healthier lifestyle as well. I find myself standing more than sitting with this desk just because it gives a nice change of pace to my workflow. And honestly, it feels really great to be standing and editing. For some reason, I just feel more creative because of that. With FlexiSpot, you get a 30-day risk-free return policy as well as a 15 year warranty so I highly recommend you try this desk out. For the accessories on my desk, I like keeping things pretty minimal. Powering this entire setup is my new 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. The M1 Mac mini was a complete workhorse, but I needed portability and going for a laptop just made a lot of sense nowadays. The 16 inch screen on this MacBook Pro is super solid for editing on the go and it just gives you plenty of real estate to see what you're actually doing on it. The majority of the times at home when I'm editing, I'm sitting at this desk, which means I'm usually docking my laptop. The monitor that I use is this LG Ultrafine 4k and it's made for apple computers it's all USB-C, it has two thunderbolt 3 ports and it's high quality it's 4k and the image is absolutely stunning i've had zero issues with this monitor besides maybe wanting to bump it up to the 5k 27 inch going for at least a 27 inch would be a lot nicer for the screen real estate but it's done the job and it was really cheap when i bought it because it was refurbished and i got it for like 500 bucks one of my recent upgrades is my new desk chair. I picked up a used Herman Miller Mira 2 and I got it for a really good deal. And I'm super glad that I got this chair. It's exactly what I was looking for. It has mesh on the bottom, a little bit of mesh on top, and it's super comfy. And it's so nice having a solid, nice, expensive chair to sit in because I now feel like I want to sit up properly. And now my posture is benefiting because of it. For my keyboard and mouse, I'm using the Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID as well as the Apple Magic Mouse 2. I love using these because they connect well with my Apple computers and they also have a 
a really long battery life and they don't take that long to charge up either. The Apple Magic Keyboard is sitting in this nice Grove made keyboard tray and I also have a wrist rest just to make sure my ergonomics are solid with it. I also have the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse which I kind of like. Ergonomically it feels really nice and I kind of go back and forth between the Magic Mouse and this mouse. The only issue that I have with it is that the connection kind of gets buggy. It's mostly after like scrolling or like clicking in a certain way. It's really hard to explain but it's super annoying so I end up using the MX Master for a bit and then when I'm kind of tired of it, I'll go back to the Apple Magic Mouse, which definitely just feels a lot smoother of a workflow. For my mouse, I picked up this Delta Hub wrist rest, which was kind of weird to get used to. I'm still honestly getting used to it, but my wrist feels so much better after using this for about a week or so. Under my keyboard and mouse, I have this Grove made desk pad. I think it's a small, it's their leather. It feels great. I kind of wish I got a bigger one. I ended up getting this desk mat when I had my old desk setup and this fit that desk setup a lot better. But now since this desk is deeper, I do think I need a bigger desk mat, which I think going for the medium would make a lot of sense. For my headphones, I upgraded from the Sony MDR7506s, which are legendary. And I picked up these Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohm headphones. And these are super comfortable. I love the material of the ear pads and they just sound super neutral and they're really nice for video editing. I also recently upgraded my hard drive solution to the Sabre four bay drive. This is a four bay enclosure, so it means I can have basically two sets of drives. I have my main drive and it's backup, and I can throw in another one and it's backup. I have these 18 terabyte drives, which is enough storage for a lot of my stuff. It's pretty quick, all things considered. And it's so nice having all of my footage in one location because as I'm pulling stuff for YouTube, it's all in that one drive. And for the most part, it's been pretty nice. And the last thing that I have on my desk is this nice little Vitra V stone diffuser. Candles are nice, but I'd be burning through them all day. No pun intended, but I'd be going through so many candles because I like having the scent all day, every day as I'm editing. So I've definitely graduated from candles and I highly recommend adding a Vitra V to your office because scents just makes things feel a lot more homey. For the cable management of my setup, I went for a pretty minimal approach. I just want to keep things neat and tidy and out of the way. And it was a little tricky because with the standing desk, you want to make sure none of the cables get completely pulled, especially the important one. So I highly recommend putting your desk at the tallest height that you'll have it and then build out the cables from there. Most of the cables won't matter because they're going from the top of the desk to under the desk, but the main cables like the power strips, those definitely need to have enough slack so they don't get pulled out. For managing my cables, I love using these little white J channels. I always put one on each leg on the backside and three under the desk. They're short so you can dip the cables in and out when needed instead of having one giant large J channel. I also like holding the cables up with these little cable clips. They're just these little adhesive channels that you can kind of put all under throughout the desk and they just keep the cables just pressed up against the underside of the desk. And alongside of that, I also like using Velcro just to kind of tie things up to make sure everything's neat and tidy underneath and there's not like this giant cable being strung throughout the entire length of the desk. Cable management doesn't need to be scary or super intricate. Just make sure things are out of the way because you don't want your feet or pets or whatever getting caught in a cable and tearing things down off your desk. Just make sure it looks nice and presentable and it's not cluttered for you. I wanna make sure that there's really no cables in sight just for my own sake because it gets distracting and it feels messy. In a clean and tidy workspace definitely translates over to having a clean and tidy mindset, especially when you have so much work that you have to do and there's so many distractions to deal with. So overall, I've been extremely happy at this desk. I've had this for a couple weeks now and I've had a lot of editing time spent at this desk. Having a proper electric standing desk has just made my editing workflow just more enjoyable, honestly. And my old Husky desk was technically a standing desk. It had a manual crank to bring it up and down, and I never had it set up in a standing orientation just because it was kind of annoying. It never really felt intuitive or convenient to go from sitting to standing. So I always had it in a sitting orientation. So now having the electric standing desk, I have it changing constantly throughout the day. And it's really made my editing days a lot smoother and I feel healthier in my mindset as well as physically. And I just don't feel as groggy and lazy because I'm not sitting down for days on end. I've been dreaming about an all white with a walnut accent setup for the longest time. And I'm really excited to start building out my desk setup to getting something that I actually want. I don't have that many things I wanna add. There are a few couple key items I think would really make this desk setup my own. First things first, I want a monitor stand. Having a nice monitor stand would allow me to put my laptop underneath it, my monitor on top, as well as having some other accessories kind of laid out with it. I've been looking at the Ugmunk and Grove made monitor stands, and I think the Ugmunk might be the ticket for me. The all metal white with the walnut legs looks amazing, and I don't really know what size to get. 60 inches long, it's kind of funky to have a 38 inch monitor stand, but then I think the small is like a 24 or 26 or something. So that's definitely number one. I might want to add studio monitors just because there's times where I don't want to edit with headphones. So I might add Audio Engine A2 Pluses in white, of course. And then the big ticket 
second item that I really want to add is the new Apple Studio display. That just looks like the end-all be-all monitor. I forget what size it is, but I know that the colors out of it are extremely accurate. So I think the Studio display would be a super clean setup and having a larger monitor would feel a lot nicer. And besides all that, this is pretty much my entire dream setup. I'm so glad that I went with this white on white setup and 60 by 30. It fits my office super well and it looks insanely good for B-roll. It's really nice having two different materials to shoot on because I have this other Husky cabinet that's black and oak and my other desk was white and oak. So the tabletops are a little too similar and now having an oak and a white setup to film lenses and cameras and all the other B-roll on, it just adds even more value to my YouTube setup because now I have just different textures to work with. So yeah, that's my new desk setup. I'm super happy with it. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sending out your Pro Plus standing desk E7, as well as the other accessories. If you guys have any questions about my desk setup or the accessories or FlexiSpot as a whole, please send me a message or leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace. Thank you.